global nature of this pandemic simply underscores that we can't beat it anywhere if we don't beat it everywhere. We all know that. That means this profound notion of interconnection needs to drive us. Sometimes in this kind of situation, speed is a lot more important than perfection. You just have to act and quickly. What are you doing with the money that was allocated for, for, for work that you're not going to be able to do anyway? Take your marketing budget, your flying budget, all these other things that you know were allocated for that you're not going to spend on. Don't wait to be asked. Take a step and take the initiative to go in and find where help is needed. How do I work with our current grantees and relaxing some of the requirements on the previously granted money uh, to start with so that they have some room to also deal with at the current crisis. We're now in it, and as a foundation, we're trying to figure out how do you both run the sprint and a marathon at the same time? How do we finally crack the code on the politics of preparedness? Whether it's with pandemic response, whether it's with conflict, or any number of other areas where preparedness and prevention is so clearly the rational right and over and over learned thing we need to do. We never quite do it the way we know we need to do it. It is impossible to think about preparedness without thinking about investing in institutions and not just investing in institutions for a short period of time, but building those institutions and building those networks that are authentic, that are led by people from the regions. We must stop looking at communities as helpless. Sometimes they have the solutions, they have the influence. You know, we, we just need to make sure we unleash the power that they have. I sit in a country and surrounded by countries across the continent where it's the informal sector that drives our economy. It is individual traders, these very small businesses that are all starting to shut down. Think about the social economic impact because that is going to hit us hard. It already is. And I think that's a wicked problem because you need that deep level of decentralization to fight it, and somehow you need global coordination at the same time. No matter where we are in our pol politics, have just are living through a global crisis that comes from our interconnectedness and our helping to prevent this crisis in China, for example, actually protects all of us. Restart that engine and, and hold people to a higher standard of expectation for cooperation to tackle the world's toughest problem. There is no room for us to have a siloed approach. If you want to beat a disease like a pandemic, like COVID-19, it requires every stakeholder to play their role. This deserves to be on the list alongside climate change and global poverty and other problems that warrant high level global cooperation. And tackle it really together uh, so that we're not restarting development when this is over. And this is what philanthropy can do, bring hope and light during times of darkness. My desire, my hope, is that we will use our privilege, our power, and our influence to demand a more just, fair, and equitable world. That's my hope. I'm going to ask you quite a personal question, which is a bit unfair because there's 400 people listening in. But you, this foundation is your own foundation. It is, yeah. it is your own money. Markets are melting down. The need is increasing and you have a, you know, a philanthropic arm. How are, you think, how are you balancing these things? How does it affect your decisions? To be honest with you, I, I say to myself, how many beds can you sleep in and how many cars can you drive? You can only sleep in one bed, drive one car. Right now, we are all stuck in one room or one house. Right from the beginning, principle by which I, we do our giving is love and kindness. Philanthropy is love for humanity. So in a crisis, we give more. 